Good morning, Wesley. Anybody have a good time this weekend? Or these last, this last week, maybe? Spring break. What a wonderful time. It has been a glorious and wonderful week. Uh, many people got to travel. Uh, there are many are returning home safely. We hope that they get all the way home today. We also had uh, some people leaving today, so you never know. Spring break goes one way and then it goes the other. But we're glad each and every one of you are here, and if you would take a moment to register your attendance, you can do that, by the way, online. Uh, you can do it with your phone. If you can find one of those QRC codes where the pencils used to be, you can point your phone straight at it, and it will take you to the registration page. Also, the prayer page, uh, and or you can do it when you're at home, and that really does help us. If you can do that, it really does help us to know who's here and what's going on. So God bless you for doing that. We appreciate it. Uh, also, if you want to make a donation online, you're welcome to do so, or you can drop your offering in one of the boxes as you go in or out. You can bring it by the church office or mail it in, whatever works best for you. And thank you so much for your generosity. We have been blessed in many, many ways. Lots of things going on in the life of our church. Uh, Women of Wesley are back online. Uh, 20 seconds with their study this week. Mary and Martha, all right. Mary and Martha, that's a good study already. Uh, also, um, just to let you all know, the Nederland Heritage Festival has been amazing all week. We've been able to have almost perfect weather. I couldn't have gotten too much better. Um, the Lots of things were donated. Thank you all very much for all the donations you made of the drinks and the different things that were donated uh, to help make the booth run. Many of you also donated your time and came out and worked in the booth, and uh, that was greatly appreciated. And we this morning gave thanks to uh, God for William and Michael who helped us um, organize this whole thing and get it done. And so far, they have grossed over $10,000 this year, uh, of which... 40% goes for sending kids to camp. Amen. Uh, we haven't got the net totals yet, but you can tell it's, a, and then the youth are working today. It's not over. So come on out and uh, support it one last time, uh, and let's, uh, let's, let's round that figure up to making uh, a net of $10,000. That would be really great. Um, I know I've got uh, Tr uh, Treva's attention now since uh, she talked camp. If you are looking to send a kid to camp, whether they're children, tween, or youth, talk to uh, uh, Treva. What's your name? <laughs> Treva. Talk to Treva, and she'll tell you all about it. I think she has 22 kids already signed up, which is amazing. Uh, who knows? We might have to get a bus. It's, it's so exciting. Uh, and also, uh, they are doing another fundraiser uh, for going to camp. They're going to have a spaghetti lunch on the 27th. $10, you get spaghetti. Somebody asked me, and meatballs. You get meatballs, so it's not just spaghetti, okay. Uh, bread, salad, and a cookie for 10 bucks. Uh, and you can even go by and pick it up. Or you can drive up and they'll bring it to you. So, uh, and if you, have, if you want a ticket, see me. I've got some tickets right there, and you can get your ticket to, and be a part of that. And all the proceeds for that go to sending kids to camp. So we're real serious about sending our kids to camp this year. Uh, and we're really excited about the fact that we've already got 22. We've already had some really good fundraisers to, to help reduce that price because it got way expensive uh, to go to camp. So we're going to try to help all set that off a little bit. Uh, Treva, anything else I need to, for you guys? Yeah, they're, they're there today until, what, 6 o'clock. So come on out. Uh, also, the Celebration Women's Ministry has a speaker coming up this week, uh, next weekend. They're, uh, they're going to be meeting uh, on the 26th, Saturday. Uh, Terry Prescott's going to be their speaker. Uh, and that's at 930, and all women are welcome to that as well. And I don't, I mean, somebody help me here. Does anybody know what milkweed is? Anybody know what, if you know what milkweed is, apparently it's important for butterfly development. Okay, and we have a butterfly garden, and apparently we need milkweed. So if you're cleaning up your milkweed, put it in a pot and bring it up here to the church. We apparently need it because you have to have it for the caterpillars or whatever uh, to, to feed on. And uh, we need several batches uh, so they can, you know, eat this one and then go eat that one. So whatever. Uh, choir, you're back on? Six o'clock? Thursday? 
They're, they're revving it up. Very good. Excellent. Anything else? All right. If you would, please stand for our opening uh, call to worship, number 176, and remain standing for our open hymn, opening hymn number 110. Let us go to God in prayer. Our most gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we bow before you in worship today, and we ask humbly that you join us, that we come into your presence in your kingdom, and that we worship you with all spirit and all truth. 
Lord, today we recognize that we have had a wonderful week. Many of us experienced the joy of travel and visiting with family and friends again and going out into this beautiful weather and enjoying a, a fabulous festival which celebrates 49 years. And Lord, we know that while we were having such a wonderful week, there were those who were not. We know that there are those out there that are still experiencing loss, those who have experienced suffering, trauma, job loss. It doesn't seem to ever go away. The, the good is never enough. There's always some of the bad as well. And yet we have been called to be a witness, a presence to something far greater than anything bad that this world can throw at us or even all the goodness that this world wants to give us and we've been given something so much greater so much larger so much more profound and eternal we have been given your son our savior jesus christ in addition to that we've been given the church and all the many ministries that you have called us to be a part of and to do and and we've been given fellowship with one another and we've been given connections to one another and all of that is critical and important and so Lord we ask for your continued blessing upon our church and upon the ministries that you have called us to we do indeed ask for your forgiveness when we're where we have failed you where we have not seen those in need and not done what you called us to do Help us to see better, to know better, to reach out to those who need. Especially, Lord, we thank you so much for being able to come into your presence today and worship you with our whole being, our whole self, who you created us to be. Lord, we are blessed and grateful. And we're very thankful that you came and, and you gave us something so special, this, the Savior of the world who taught us to pray and say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you remain seated for our hymn of prayer this morning, number 351.
come for the children and tweens message. Can all the children and tweens come forward? Including the big ones. That would be Pastor Douglas. <laughs> come on down. Yay. beautiful up here, isn't it, Kaysen? Come see me. Come sit down. You want to sit right there by Gavin? Good job. You know, guys, sometimes God gives us hard things to do. How do you suppose he wants us to do those hard things? Jesus taught a lot of things in the Sermon of the Mount. He taught a lot of things that were opposite to the ways of the people and the, relig the religious leaders of that time. He taught a lot of things that, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. <laughs> but Jesus was teaching about a different society. He wanted the people to learn about the kingdom of God. He wanted them to know that this is a different world where people live in peace and they help one another. He wanted the people to know that they could see the kingdom on earth if they live by God's principles. <laughs> We've talked many times about the most important commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. If God wants you to love him with everything you have, how do you think you'll do that, and how will you love your neighbor as yourself? Well, one of the ways... To love God is to forgive. When your brother and sister does something to you that hurts you, Jesus says forgive them anyway. And you may want to hurt them just so they will know how it will feel. But Jesus says forgiving is better. And he says that God will forgive the things you do when you forgive those who hurt you. Jesus also says to love your neighbor. We know that everybody is our neighbor, whether you know them or not. And God says to love them. You may have a neighbor, neighbor who annoys you, or maybe they are loud and messy, but Jesus says it doesn't matter. Love them anyway. And Jesus asks you to do the hard things. And he says, look beyond their noise and all their messes and forgive them. And as you forgive the hurts and bothers that they do to you, you will be loving them as God loves you with a forgiving love. Let's pray. Dear Father, help us to forgive one another as you have forgiven us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would like to go next door, you may. Thank you, Tammy. Our scripture lesson this morning uh, is from the gospel according to Matthew. Uh, the sixth chapter beginning with the 14th and only the 15th verse so just a short reading but they're real important words so would you stand for the reading of the gospel heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses the word of God for the people of God thanks, thanks be to God A, that's a tough verse. We're going to talk about it this morning. It, uh, I always don't want to talk about this verse. <laughs> but I got to talk about it. So we'll talk about it here this morning in just a second. I have a confession first to make. When I was a bit younger, maybe when I was a whole lot younger, uh, I was fascinated with fire. You might even say that I was kind of a pyromaniac. Um, I thought fire was the coolest thing in the world, and of course, that kind of is a contradiction since fire is hot. <laughs> so, but I still thought it was pretty cool. But I will never forget when I was a boy uh, how my next-door neighbor and best friend Claude Tarver and I would 
build forts in the woods that were real close to my home. There was, you know, just maybe five, six, ten blocks away, there was this patch of woods, and, and we would go in there and we would build forts and we would build campfires. And on most Saturdays, Claude and I would head to the woods and we would build our forts and improve on our forts. And of course, you know, uh, a fort was you dig a hole in the ground and you bank up some dirt around the top and then you take bushes and leaves and twigs and all that kind of stuff and pile it on top and that was our fort. And so most of the times our fort didn't last but about a week because the rains came and filled it up um, and we'd have to dig another one. Um, and we had forts all over the woods. Sometimes we reused old ones. And we also, you know, would build a campfire out front. One of those times, one of those years when we were building our forts, we noticed that we didn't really have to move all that often because it hadn't been raining very much. In fact, it had been a long time since it had rained, and we'd been using the same fort for quite a while. We really made a lot of improvements. Um, and the reason we didn't have to do anything, not only was there no rain, but it had been so long since it had rained, there was a burn ban on. Um, and, of course, we didn't pay any attention to that. <laughs> we just went out there, worked on our fort, and we built our using, usual roaring campfire. But of course, for us, a roaring campfire was about three sticks of wood. So anyway, we built a campfire. We were out there on a Saturday morning, and it had been you know, a long, long time in this bird band that we didn't know about. And all of a sudden, two policemen showed up and threatened to arrest us if we didn't t put that fire out immediately. Apparently, we were making some smoke. Um, and, and of course, I panicked. I had never put out a fire because we just let our fire go out. That's how we knew what time it was to go home. But on this particular occasion, I learned how to put out a fire quickly. It was Claude who actually knew how to do that. I was panicked and running around looking for a bucket. Of course, there was no water uh, to put in the bucket, so I was, that was my only choice. And, and Claude just reached over, grabbed a shovel, stuck it in the dirt, clunk, 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 fire out. I said, man, that's pretty smart. Um, Claude, you know, was a straight-A student, and guess what? I was not. <laughs> um, I was amazed. That fire went out very quickly, just like we had used a fire extinguisher. And of course, we know that a fire extinguisher smothers the fire, it deprives the fire of oxygen with chemicals so that the fire can't breathe, and, and so if it can't breathe, it won't burn. And the bottom line, though, for us was that the fire went out very quickly and we didn't have to go to jail. So I was grateful. Now, I say all of this because the key to this Bible story for today is also all, all about putting out fires. In particular, it's about putting out the fire of unforgiveness. Because today is the Sunday in Lent when we talk about forgiveness. And most of us hear those words that were read a few moments ago from the gospel lesson and they, they just go right past our ears. Some of us don't think it really applies to us. But what you need to understand, what is at stake today when you are gripped by the inability to forgive, what is at stake when you are holding grudges and when you you have this memory that you keep that keeps you locked in a prison in a specific time and, and, and bitterness and anger, what is at stake is that you are not able to go forward in your life and you certainly are not able to live the life as God intended for you to live it. By the way, did you know that unforgiveness never, unforgiveness never hurts the person you're angry at? We think it does, but it doesn't. It only hurts us. The scripture for today is very very plain it if you do not forgive God cannot forgive you my friends there is no way to sugarcoat that message it is a painful truth and so let me ask you this morning do you want God to forgive you everybody nod yes that's what we want we all want to be forgiven if so then you have to forgive others. You have to. There's no way around it. 
And the reason you must is not because God refuses to forgive you. That's what a lot of people think this passage is saying. It's not because God refuses to forgive you. It's because your heart is so gripped and so on fire with passion that you cannot receive the forgiveness of God. It isn't that God isn't extending his love and his mercy to you. God's love and mercy is being poured out on this planet in absolute truckloads every second of every moment of every day. So God is good and he loves us, but when we live in unforgiveness, we block the grace of God. We block the grace of, grace of God from penetrating our heart and softening us so that we are kind and merciful and so that we are just as, ki- and, as kind and merciful to others as we would wish God to be to us. And so here's the bottom line. When we don't forgive, we enslave ourselves. This is the reason why the church gives us this Sunday. It's the day that we remember. If, you, if we looked at the Old Testament reading for today, there, it's, it's the story of Adam and Eve. And this is the day we remember Adam, how he blamed the woman and the snake and ultimately, even God. What did he say? What did he, it, it's that woman you gave me. It wasn't my fault. That's the stupidest thing men ever said, but okay. We do that, folks. We blame others. It's never our fault. And that's the first key, the first sign when you... When your first inclination is to start making excuses, well, this is the reason why I did that, or this is the reason why it's not my fault, that's the first clue that the fire of unforgiveness is already burning in your heart. The fire of your inability to receive the grace of God is already burning in your heart. It's already in there. And we're thinking, well, you just don't understand. If you understood my situation, if you understood my circumstances, then you'd understand why it's not my fault. And to be sure, there are times in our lives, folks, when we are in difficult situations and when we make mistakes. We all do. We all make bad choices. But the answer isn't to start giving a litany of why you're not guilty That's a symptom of an illness, a symptom of self-centeredness that locks you away and enslaves you to the fire of unrighteousness. And so we've got to take the oxygen away from that fire so that we can extinguish it. And the first step in taking the oxygen away from that fire is not to blame somebody else. You made the choice you need to own it. And when you are, find yourself gripped in the fire of unforgiveness, the fire of an inability to take your own responsibility, when you find yourself gripped by that fire, you will find yourself burning with passions. And passions are very intoxicating. Now, I know this is going to surprise some of you, but I don't do very well in traffic. I'm very intolerant and unforgiving when it comes to other people on the road, especially in their very my way. <clears throat> I don't like it. Sometimes I wonder why they're even on my road in the first place when I'm on it, okay? And if you're going to be on my road at the same time as me, then you need to get out of my way. And if you don't get out of my way, I might say something like, <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? And in that moment, in a moment, because I'm not keeping a space between my feelings and my actions, I find myself far down a road burning with passions before I even know how I got there. The problem is, once you kindle that fire in your heart, you're going to have to find a way to extinguish it or it will burn you up. Unforgiveness will burn you alive, folks. 
your inability to repent will burn you alive. Your inability to accept responsibility for your actions will burn you alive. Your inability to consider yourself as the problem rather than to blame everybody else around you in all of your circumstances will burn you alive. And guess what? That, my friends, is a slavery you were meant to be freed from. You weren't meant to be locked into that kind of life. That's not how God created us. That's not who we are. And if you're going to be freed from that enslavement, the first step is to realize that your life is going to get stuck in the spot where you can't forgive. Wherever you are in your life, whatever that moment was in your life that you can't forgive, that's your life. And until you can forgive, you will be stuck in that moment forever. That's why it's called hell, my friends. That's why it's called hell. Whatever spot in your life where you can't forgive, that's the spot you're going to be stuck in. But today, thank God, today the doors of freedom have been thrown wide open. The power of God to extinguish the flame of your unforgiveness has been given to you and to me. My unforgiveness, your unforgiveness, it's been given to us. Because the moment that we can be free begins with our ability to look at another person and say three simple words. Simple but not easy. Three simple words. Please forgive me. And to know in that moment that God, not you, God has put out the fire that you could not. I don't know about you, but I need that. I need that. Maybe you do too. Amen? Glory to God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving us in spite of ourselves. Help us, dear Lord, to create a space between our feelings and our actions so that we don't find ourselves burning with the passions that ignite the fire of unforgiveness. Help us to see those places where we are stuck in unforgiveness so that we can receive your grace with three simple words. Please forgive me. And in that moment, we experience the freedom to live as you intended for us to live since the very beginning. All this we ask in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand as we affirm our faith in God? For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And would you remain standing as we sing our closing song this morning, number 672, God be with you till we meet again.
God can put out the fire of our unforgiveness with three simple words. Please forgive me. Amen? Go in God's peace.